Hello. I'm just gonna hang around for a bit till this thing is properly broadcasting, because there's a pretty massive lag between when I actually hit stream and when this thing starts, so no one can hear me now, but if this is a VOD, you can probably hear me back. Let's just wait for this thing to show up. Play around with the volume a little. And just sit around refreshing until this thing shows up. Ah, good. Okay, cool. One time, yeah. And I'm just alerting various people because I know that uh, Mimi wanted to be here. One view are good. Hello, Yup or Joop. Because I am playing from an emulator. Hey, Neo Lucky. Yeah, I'm playing from an emulator this time, so I don't need to worry about the Elgato display taking up the entire monitor. TV, I am good. Yeah, I'm noticing some slight, like, uh, glitching with the audio, but I think that's kind of like... We're just gonna have to deal with it. Wait for some more people to show up. It's like, it's, uh, it's three past nine here, so I'll wait until, like, maybe, eh, like, maybe, like, ten past, whatever. I've tweeted this out and alerted the relevant people, so... Why aren't there more games set in the Heian period? I don't know. This is the game that uh, we all thought Sekiro was going to be the successor to, and it obviously wasn't. And you're lucky just noticing the creepy blinking on the title screen. So yeah, this game is famously incredibly rare and incredibly expensive. The US copy is, is an absolute fortune. The, um, the PAL copy is, like, still pretty expensive, but it's not, it's not unobtainable. It's, like, about three times as much as a new game, whereas the, the, uh, American NTSC copy is, like, is, like, a fucking ransom. Japanese copy is, I think, pretty common. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything I can close to reduce the stuttering, but I think we're just gonna... Oh, whatever. Well, um, Sekiro kind of was... From what I read, it was meant to be the sequel to Tenchu. And then, during development, they thought it'd be better, like, as its own thing. I think you can kind of see when that happens in the story. Because it goes from being a pretty... Yeah, the the stuttering is, um... I think we're just gonna have to, like, accept that. It's, it's running on an emulator, so the speed is kind of, like, 
fluctuating between 90 and 100 percent. Um, I played this last night, I did like a test run, and the stuttering is mostly an FMV thing. And there aren't that many, it's, it's pretty much just this opening. Okay, it's six past nine now, well, there's like six people watching, I'll give it a bit longer. So everyone can hear me fine? Oh, hey, Harvey. Yeah, hopefully everyone can hear me fine. The last time I did this, I had a noise gate. Because it was storming outside, and I, I realized that the noise gate, the end of my sentences often just disappeared because I, I wasn't speaking at full volume. So I've adjusted the settings. Hopefully you can hear me fine. Okay, cool, cool, yeah. You know, Lucky says we're good. Uh, we're on 8 viewers. It's 9.07, I might wait till, like... 9.10 might be a while. We'll just, uh... We'll just wait. People seem to be showing up. Hi, Grim! Oh, hey, uh, Otters is here. Hello, Mawu. Uh, would I play Fatal Frame? Yeah, we have a series of, like, Fatal Frame experts that we're friends with, so... They are almost certainly going to join us for something. Mimi wanted to watch this, and I, I know she's up because she replied to a tweet I made, but I haven't seen her on Discord, so I don't know. This intro kind of, like, spoils a fair amount of the plot, actually, now that I'm watching it. Okay, we're on 11 viewers, it's 9.09, .09. I think that's a good time to start. So I've got my split screen set up from before here, so... So Kuon as a game is split into three chapters that are called Yin, Yang, and Kuon. Uh, the Kuon chapter is pretty short, so... It's really just yin and yang. We're gonna do yin tonight. I played through yin last night as like a test run. It was about four hours without a guide. So now that I know what I'm doing, it's probably gonna be around three and a half. There weren't that many stumbling blocks. It's a pretty linear game without that many puzzles in it. And I just wanted to thank uh, Laura slash Astral Lace, who people will probably know because we're friends. And, um... She is a big Kuon fan, and when I said I was going to run this through an emulator, she gave me the settings to use, because if you don't have the right settings, you get these weird ghosting effects. Okay, good night, V. Yeah, um, so yeah, you would get these weird ghosting effects, so she, she showed me you had to, like, manually change a texture offset to get it working, and it does work, so thank you for that. Uh, this was released on the PS2 in 2004 by From Software. Like I was saying uh, before, the the English versions are both very, very, very rare. And they're very expensive, so we are emulating this. And... Just, we have one more of these slides, and then we'll go back to full screen. So, something about Kuon is, it is... In terms of its story, very, very dreamlike, deliberately. But it does have a coherent narrative to it. It's not just, like, dream logic. It is, like, there is a story that does all make sense, if you kind of line everything up. 
This is a video you can find. I'm not going to post the gigantic uh, YouTube URL here, but if you just search for that title, there is a channel called Exorcizzle. And she has a Kuon kind of like recap explanation up that explains the sort of three elements of the three chapters of the game kind of contradict each other, but that is by design. And we'll get into it when we get into the second chapter, but like, um, if you've played the original Resident Evil, like in that you get to choose between Chris and Jill, and they both have slightly different stories, but they, they also go through the same stuff in a way that Clearly these two stories kind of have both happened at the same time because they would have encountered the same things. Kuon kind of does that, but it's built into the story that it happens that way because it, it deliberately introduces an unreliable narrator. So, yeah, well, I mean, we'll get to it when we get to um, the later chapters of the game, but for now... We will just stretch this back out again. Uh, and good. I guess we'll let the intro run one more time uh, in like full screen to give you a sense of like what this game is about. The Protato asking, what is wrong with Sekiro? Well, this is the game that we kind of thought Sekiro was going to be a sequel to. Or like a successor to, but um, it ended up being Tenchu. And I, I do kind of wish, like... I mean, Survival Horror is making a comeback. Got Resident Evil 7. Got the port of Resident Evil 2. You know, we give us VR Kuon. I'm just going to bring up the emulator console for a bit because... Uh, this game is not hard, but there are some really, I would just say, bullshit encounters in it that I kind of didn't know what was happening and then I died because this, this game, like, it doesn't have an on-screen health display and it, it's quite clumsy, so... There will be points where I will be saving just in case we accidentally get killed by Gaki. Hello, Andre. You are just in time. So you can see here Yin Phase has end on it because I, I beat this last night. So we're just going to start over. And uh, for the sake of this going smoothly, we are going to play on Daydream, which is easy. Uh, Sin is not here. Sin is asleep. Uh, Sin is also in the middle of moving house. So I won't, I won't talk. There's no narration here, but um, I'll just let you read this. So in this chapter, we are playing as a woman called Utsuke, and Kurea is our sister. And our father, who is like tending to this shrine, has summoned us here to basically figure out what's going on. The seal, the silk, how? Do you really think father is here? In this place? Ye 
Yes, I'm sure of it. If we ask someone, I am sure we'll find out where he is. Wait. There's something strange about this place. Don't worry. Utsuki, come on. Let's go. Yeah, this is a uh, ROM game with no mouth animation. It gets very confusing later on when you see people talking. This has a fairly large cast for a survival horror game. And approximately three quarters of them are creepy women in white makeup with long flowing hair and robes. So it can be kind of like trying to keep track of them sometimes. To be careful. Hey, Kayan. <laughs> it's nothing serious. Don't worry about this. There is someone over there. Wait, I'll go see. Please stay here until I get back. So this game has a really, really nice setting that I appreciate where you can choose between either having the character move relative to the direction the camera is placed or you can use Resident Evil style tank controls where you turn on the spot and then use up and down to move backwards and forwards. So I'm going to go with type A. But uh, yeah, this this game is... The environment's entirely 3D, but it uses Resident Evil-style fixed camera angles, which is kind of an interesting choice. I'm trying to pick up this thing. Here we go. So this game is... It has a lot of very odd mechanics. Took me a while to get used to. The key one is that you can do this. You meditate. So what meditation does is it heals you. You can, like, as long as no one is attacking you, you can just do this and it will recover your health very slowly. So you kind of have unlimited healing. The problem is that when you run, you won't immediately realize this because it seems like such a bizarre mechanic, but as you run, you're actually losing health. So see now if I stop and meditate, I got a longer animation because I had more damage to heal. Um, I really don't like this system. I know what they were going for, but the problem is that like the game already penalizes you for running. Sorry. The game already penalizes you for running by having enemies, like, alerted to your presence when you run. So adding health drain to that, like, it means you sort of shamble everywhere at a snail's pace, and I am not a fan of it. Thankfully, this is not a very big game. Uh, now you're lucky asking if it's, like, stamina instead of health. It's... It's odd because, like, what we just ran into there where it said there was a Tempest. Uh, if anyone is familiar with Neo, Neo had a similar thing called Key Pulses, where parts of the ground, you would see this weird, like, aura on it. And if you touched the aura, it drained your, like, stamina. So you had to perform a series of button prompts, like, in a, a rhythm to get rid of the, the bad vibes, basically. And this does the same thing. It's like randomly, like, just weird shit will happen and you'll have to heal yourself to kind of purify, like, what you just went through. And, um, yeah, if people were here the last time Sin attempted to play this, you will remember that several of the trees in this 
absolutely terrified her. And whenever she went by them, she would scream loudly. I'm just going to close the window, hang on. Um, yeah, we should be fine. So I'm taking a risk and running. Which, uh... So these spots here, these are the... These are the save points. And like Resident Evil, you have a limited number of saves. You use an item to do it, and the item is a... It's like a little paper boat. That you gotta put there and it like sails off. Um, we probably won't be using any because I'll be saving with the the emulator. I'll just do it now. So these spikes and discs are central to like the main puzzle of this. Um, I'll show you when we get there. Basically our goal for the first sort of chunk of this is to find three spikes and three discs. We just found one. See, here we go. Don't run. Be as quiet as possible. If you make any noise, a gaki, gaki's are the enemies, will detect your presence. Okay, so... I kind of found that, um, the idea that, like, running attracts enemies should be a big enough impediment to running. Hey, Vodka. I feel like having enemies attracted to you and also losing health is... Maybe not a great idea? Those creepy twins become very important later on. I'll just show you the map. Uh, where is it? Oh, we're in the wrong part of the estate. Never mind. Uh. Are there any Kuon references in Souls games? Um, I don't know if, like, Kuon reference is specifically a thing, but, like, certain From kind of tropes are in this that show up in Souls later on. The most obvious being, like, the the vermin from, uh, from Bloodborne. The idea of these, like, centipede things that live inside your body. Which obviously show up in Sekiro later on. Like, they're pretty prominent in this, but we won't see them yet. Dump scare. Well, Vodka pointing out she has the athletic prowess of a potato, that is going to become incredibly annoying later on when... when, um, she, like, finds herself unable to sort of step over an upturned chair. Okay, so spell cards. These are our ammo. You can bind them to triangle and square. If you don't have anything bound to those buttons, they just stab. But... Hang on. Uh, this shrine here. This is our goal we need to find. You can see that there's three discs missing. So we've got to find... We have one disc already, we've got to find the others.
the last one living. But is she still really alive? <laughs> this part I never quite understood, because... She just sort of turns around and says something jumped into the pond, but I don't know why she assumes that. So this is just explaining the, um, the way the discs and spikes work. She says that, like, basically she just tells you where to get them, but, um, the game is pretty linear, so you likely won't get stuck. So here's some more thrilling combat. Um... The combat in this game is horrible. It's really, really bad. Um, I get why they do it. Uh, let's get rid of this thing first. Keep in mind, this is on easy, so... Uh, in one of the later chapters, you play as, like, uh, this sort of hyper-competent warrior exorcist so i can see why they want to get you used to combat like in all of the chapters so that when you have to control same it's not like they shove a new mechanic on you out of nowhere but like it's not a good time there's also no like health display um, you have to figure it out based on, kind of, the, the screen will get gradually, like, wavier and sort of, like, more distorted. And that's the cue that you've taken damage, but... I died quite a bit, but just not understanding how much damage I've taken later on. I think we're coming up to the part where Sin deafened several people. Uh, it's here. Vodka says the poor screen shows your health. Uh... Is it the blue thing? I don't know. Oh, the color changes from green to red. Okay. I will pay attention to that then. That is a very, very odd way of showing health. The blue bar is your health. Okay, thank you. It's blue, green, yellow, red. Okay, thank you. Another thing this game does is, like, sometimes you just need to go somewhere for, like, it doesn't accomplish anything, but it makes another NPC appear somewhere else and they do something. I think this might be one of them. Oh, I guess it's not. I didn't, like, make notes, because I just sort of, like, I pretty much just ambled through it last night, and it, it wasn't that difficult, so. I'm actually just going to close down Discord, because I think it's hogging a lot of the RAM. Hang on. I don't remember it uh, being this slow last night. I remember it hovering around 90 to 100, but I'm seeing it drop to, like, 70. Here we go. I will show you something that, that really, like, threw me when I first played it. You can see in the middle of the screen, there's, like, a red X. And I thought, oh, that must be my destination. It's not. It's to show where the, um... That, like, rock thing fell over and you couldn't get through. So I wasted a lot of time going back there when I didn't need to.
Are you all right? Oh, yes, I think so. Thank you. I am Utsuki. I live in the shrine, not far from here. I'm Sakuya. What are you doing here? I'm looking for my father. He's the elder priest of the shrine. My sister and I came from the mountain, but I lost her. It's not safe to be alone here. I wish I could help you find your sister, but... Here, take this. It will help you. looks similar to the one father uses. Your father is the priest, correct? Here, take this. My father gave this to me. You may find it useful. <sighs> Thank you. Please. Be careful. I will. And thank you. Take care. Um, Uthmathar asking about Vegemite. Vegemite is like eating a mouthful of like slime made of salt. It is an acquired taste. I cannot stand it. But, I know a lot of people who swear by it. We've got some, uh... Some opinions, some very, very hot takes on Vegemite and Marmite. In the chat. So instead of having... Hang on, I'll show you. Instead of having... Oh, it doesn't show up on this shrine. Anyway. Um, instead of having traditional keys, you have things called seals. And each seal corresponds to one of the planets. And the seal's value is what number that planet is in the solar system. So that was like Mercury seal, so that's a one. So when we find the Mercury cloth, you'll be able to open all, like, the level one kind of, like, seals. And that that's how it gates progression. So we're now on the other side of the collapsed piece of rock that she can't climb over. This is like, Vodka was making fun of her for not being able to climb this. This is like the most arduous thing she refuses to climb. There's a part later on where she just won't step over a, a door that is just like lying flat. She is, um... She, she is not, 
an especially like <laughs> physically capable character. Uh, we just got an important note from Kureha. And it specifies kind of ominously, I'll prepare many victims for you to merge with. What do I tend to snack on? Um, I don't know. Whatever is available. I used to live at a place that had a uh, vending machine in the basement. Okay, hang on. This this is the tree. This specific tree here, every single time, if you were here, when Sin went past this, she would shriek like a banshee. Because she thought it was a monster approaching her. So... Much of that stream, which went for like six hours, if you'll recall, was this. Went to... <coughs> but I have overcome my fear of trees. So we'll be fine. Which one is this? Saturn. Okay. So they show up as numbers on the map. Uh, I'm gonna get slightly further away from it. It's like, you can see Saturn is the sixth planet, so that's the level six seal. So we're gonna have to get the Saturn, like, cloth to open it. Another thing that uh, Utsuki cannot claim over. Yeah, with Mathar pointing out that when Sin screams, it's endearing because she is genuinely frightened. It's not like um, Five Nights at Freddy's epic reaction. And much like uh, the early Resident Evils, this this just makes things glow. The vessel thing, that's how you um, save the game, but we'll be using save states. So, this puzzle. I'm coming. Okay, this puzzle. I was stuck here for a really long time. I you, Later on you get a note that tells you, like, what... Um, how to solve it. I did not understand the note at all. It's something to do with with Chinese astrology written in Japanese. So I have no idea what, what you actually are supposed to do here. The trick is that it makes a slightly different noise when it's right. I think there was just like no way to do this puzzle in English, so they did it this way. save here because, um, Gaki. Oh good, I, I inspired Uthmathar to get a copy of, um, Battle Construction Vehicles. When I played this the first time, I was very conservative with my card use, because I, I didn't know what was happening, but, um, I got to the end of the game with, like, 50 fire cards left over, and a ton of summons I never used, so... The real problem with the the cards is that they have a wind-up. 
So if you're like cornered like this, it's maybe not a great idea to use them because you get attacked while you're like pulling on the card. I'll try using one now. Yeah, see, it's not even like really that great. Cool. Yeah, the puzzle requires you to understand like like um Chinese astrology, which like Yeah, yeah, Japanese and Chinese astrology and it's just like Jesus. Um I think there was just no way to make that like work in English without completely redesigning the puzzle. So I don't know if that like clicking is in the original, but that that's how you do it in this. You do it by sound. Kyan just talking about the need to remove spikes, and uh, Kyan is the guy who made I Wanna Be the Guy, so... You will remember that game has a lot of spikes that people wanted to be removed. Where are we going? Uh, helpfully, it just tells you which doors are locked. So, like, we already know that that door there is locked without having to chest it. So, yeah, there's a couple of, like, I guess quality of life improvements in this. Oh, thank you, Uthmatha. Just, uh, complimenting the, the Red Grave podcast that we did. So the girl that just ran off there, her name is Ayako. She is the daughter of the, the, like, Lady of the Manor. And what that note does is it says, like, we will, um... If anything happens, hide in your room, I'll ring the bell when I need you. So, it's cueing us to, like, we'll need, basically, to get to her, we need to ring a bell. Uh, we'll get the bell later on. You may remember that staggering guy from the intro. Yeah, bells are a Buddhist thing, yeah. Okay, this this is the part that um, made Sin, I think, consider quitting the game. I told her to peer through it, and then she saw something and started yelling at me and said I should never have told her to look through it. So, there's Ayako. Everything yeah, seems to be in order. Oh, oh. Oh, no. And uh, that led to about five minutes of her screaming at me. Mimi noticed a thing in uh, Sekiro that's close to Kuon. Okay, I guess we'll talk about that, like, when we do Yang and Kuon. Yeah, M Mimi was online before, but I don't know where she is now. Oh, Mimi and you, okay. Okay, so this part here, I'm just gonna save here. This was my first death playing it. Oh, she's at work today, okay. 
Well, we'll be doing this again so she'll be able to see it the next time. This is the first time I died, because it... Wait, what? Oh yeah, it just, like, puts you in a pincer between two Garki. And, like, I didn't know what I was doing. Also, at, at this point I was trying to do, like, ammo conservation, because uh, Resident Evil taught me to do that, but, um... After beating this, like, I realized it gives you way more ammo than you'll ever realistically need, at least on this difficulty, so... Gaki Sandwich, correct. And that one is Seal, yep, Venus. You can tell because there's like, you can see there's two there, so that's two, so that's Venus, second planet. And this one's got three, so it's Earth. This character should be in PlayStation Battle Royale. I have a, like, um, there's a shovelware company called D3 Interactive, who I, I, they, they make Earth Defense Force, but they made a bunch of other just, like, really cheap garbage. They released their own mascot fighter, and it has, like, like, characters you would, you would not expect, like, just, like, a random schoolgirl from a maze game they made. And, like, an alien... It's just... Uh... This is another thing that she can't go past, by the way. It's like... Conservatively about as high as her ankle. Uh, she cannot walk past this. Another neat detail is if you stand in blood, you leave, like, blood footprints, but only for a little bit, and then it washes off. Oh, that's okay. Oh, uh, Bear, we've been streaming for, it says 48 minutes, but a lot of that was just waiting for people to show up. Um, the VOD's are gonna stay up, so, like, you'll be able to watch it. So that, that note just explains how to use the seals to unlock stuff. It's full of little spiders that just die if you stand on them. And... We get another cloth. Okay, so we've got Mercury. So... Mercury is one, first planet, so that'll open all the level one locks for us. How do you spell Moja? Um, it's, I, well, the thing about the spelling is, like, it's a word that wasn't designed to be spelled with the Roman alphabet. So it's, like, I think that the way that it's most commonly spelled is, like, M-O-U-J-A. Yeah, Mo Moja is, like, it's the word that they use for hollow in the Japanese script of Dark Souls, and it means, like, the dead. But it's a specific meaning of dead. It's like dead who are trapped in a... Kind of like trapped in, in like a cycle of reincarnation that they can't escape. Which is kind of what undeath is in that game. It's not meant to be like you're a vampire. It's meant to be more like you can't sort of move on from this world. Also remember that um, <laughs> the map in Kuon is bound to the L1 button. So when Sin was playing it, she'd start button mashing and struggling, which would lead to her just opening and closing the map constantly. 
So now we have uh, seal one, so we should be able to open the... Yep, level one is in front of us. The shrine there in the middle, that had a mercury seal on it, but we'll go back there later on. Yeah, Dark Souls uh, draws on a lot of, um, a lot of, like, it's like the aesthetics are Western, but the story really isn't. Which is why I keep, like, um, emphasizing that when I talk about it. Because a lot of people would assume, they'd see the word God and they'd assume that, like, oh, here we go, hang on. Where is Korea? Korea is... The song put her in a trance, and she disappeared. Please, please help me find Korea. She's my daughter. Don't worry. I want to give you this also. There's something I need to take care of. Go now. Find and watch over her. Notice if we keep talking to our father, his responses get increasingly more annoyed. Aren't you worried about Koreha? Go find her. Why are you dawdling? So we can now open the number two doors because we got given the... Uh, the Venus cloth, but there's stuff down here that I think I can go down here now. But there's like stuff in the spring pavilion that I know I need from the last time I played it, so hopefully that is accessible. Oh, hang on, here's another astrology puzzle. So this... Um, again, I know nothing about Chinese astrology. This... You just kept pressing it and eventually, like, they all light up. And that's the... Puzzle? P puzzle. We solved it with our knowledge of astrology? Um, the dust is, like, it's a healing thing as well. Obviously, if you're being attacked, you don't want to stand there doing that because it makes you a target. So you want to keep the dust for, like, if you need to heal during combat. You can see here that, um, there's two, like, little plinths there, so we go put our dog statue on them. Did they change that for the localization? I don't know, but like, earlier on there was another astrology puzzle that you solved based on sound. So I think they may have like added that just to make it a little more like actually doable, because if you didn't know Chinese astrology, you just wouldn't be able to do that if that was the only like solution. So yeah, here's a hole that uh, Utsuki can't stay. Even though clearly, like, there's just, like, over to the side. Like, she could shimmy along that wall, but um, she won't do it. Oh, okay, that was that was the animal year, not astrology. Okay. So that's a level one. We can open it.
Some of these rooms uh, don't. I uh, just like items. Here we go. We have to come back here for the when we have level three. So there's a series of things called the Silkworm Journals that kind of fill in what is going on. And, um... I mean, we'll find out more as we go on, but basically, like... This, the backstory to this involves a mulberry tree with silkworms in it, and there's a lot of, like... Cocoon and, like, flower and tree imagery going on. Oh, here we go. Right. So, yeah, the Zodiac is astrology. So, here we go. This is why we needed to do that, like, ring puzzle earlier, is to get these pliers. So I did not know this when I played it, and I got lost for ages, because I, I thought, oh, I, I don't understand this ring puzzle. Clearly, it'll be explained later on. And it, it sort of is, but it mostly isn't. But now I realize, no, you just gotta... You're supposed to just get the pliers to do this part. That nets us an extra spike, so good. We have two spikes and one disc. May actually just shrink the window slightly. That shouldn't cause oh it did, okay. <laughs> there we go. I'm starting to wonder if the slowness was down to the uh the size of the window. And there's a cat pestering me. What do you want? Ugh. You sit here and don't cause any trouble. Mimi is watching, but she's not in chat. That's good. Hello, Mimi. I assume she's watching on her phone. I'm going to save here because there's a ton of gaki. Yeah, this is very weeb.
Well, this is set in the Heian period, long before anime was invented. I don't remember why I came here. Hang on. Is this optional? Is this just to get fire cards? I don't remember. I did this last night. Oh well. Oh yeah, East Gates later on. Okay, so this place is important because you just, like, there's a ton of items here that you need. And I, I skipped here because I thought it was going to be later on. Uh, what else is here? Good, good, good ghosts! Sin's here! It's okay, Sin. We we saw the tree. And I did I did impersonate you screaming at it in case anyone missed you. Yes, yeah, Sin is moving house, so she's quite busy. So yeah, like when Sin was in the woods, I'm going to be streaming to sort of make up for the fact that we can't really record or edit. So after this one, I'm going to do another Bloodborne one, and then when that's done, I'll do the Yang part of Kuon. Yang and Kuon together, because it's uh, the Kuon chapter itself is pretty short. Is this PCX2? Yeah. Sin sent me a picture of her new house and she said, Look, look, I have a kitchen now. Yeah, um, P PC SX2 is like, it's working for me. You can see that there's like, 
It's chugging a bit, but my computer is not very good. Like, it's a real, like, potato. Um, it just exists to write essays on. It's not really designed for anything else. It has, like, terrible RAM, so... It's running, like, okay-ish. It's dropping to, like, 70% sometimes. But, like, I remember we when we played Katamari Damacy for the podcast, like, it was it was down to, like, 5% speed because it couldn't handle all the physics. Okay, this is kind of important. Look at that. Like, we're taking a fair amount. Yeah, we've gone red now, so. Just, uh. What is that? Well, you can see, like, there's been a lot of references to, like, silkworms and cocoons, and that was kind of like. kind of like something that was pupating. So that might be important later on. Hey, Bob. Just meditate to get our health back. And we're good. save again. We are actually making pretty good time. Because I uh, actually remembered where things were. Ah, uh, no, we're not in part two yet. Uh, we're starting again, like... Sin did stream this a couple of months ago, but um, we're just going to start over for the sake of like this playthrough. Uh, this way. Oh, I forgot to do something. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> You do get, um, more weapons later on. And they have, like, kind of Dark Souls-y descriptions. Listing, like, what god they represent. So yeah, speaking of, like, people were saying, oh, what, what like, Dark Souls things are in Kuon. This is kind of an example of that. Because earlier on, we couldn't get through here. Like, we couldn't use the stairs. But now that... Like, it's pretty arbitrary, because I don't know why we couldn't hurt this thing before, but... We can now go up and down the stairs, which we couldn't before, so... Yep, so here's the shrine. Use Mercury to... Get, uh, there's like a spike and a disc in here. Or is it just a, it's just a disc, okay. Is it this one? No, wrong one. 
We have to go back to the room that we solved the um, weird light up astrology puzzle to get into, and that will. Oh, we're on the wrong side of the map. So this is where the running drains your hit points thing becomes an issue when we just have to like get somewhere efficiently. Like I'm losing health as I attempt to go there. Ugh, and that's a dead end. So I guess it's kind of like you jog somewhere and then you have to stop for a breather afterward. It, it's like I guess making that into a system, but it is... It is not fun. Uh... Yeah, yeah, it was near that weird tent thing. She's not even really running, it's more like a... a sort of leisurely stroll jog. Is this game scary? Yeah. It's, it's very unsettling, uh, conceptually. Like, it's about as, in terms of, like, jump scares and stuff, it's pretty standard, but, like, the actual... When you learn about what, what Kuon is and what they're doing in this mansion, it gets incredibly, like, fucked up. In excess, I'm in excess of before my time, like, substantially. Press the wrong button. Uh, where are we going? Okay, so this thing here is supposed to be the clue to that that like ring puzzle from before. Uh, good luck. I did not understand it at all. I just <laughs> spun it till the till the the numbers um lined up. Anyway. So we need three discs and three spikes. We're now on three discs and two spikes. So we just gotta see like where haven't we gone yet. So like, this is a good map, because it just tells you, okay, I haven't been where the two and the three are. So let's go there. It's this way. Big diaper map. I guess, like, you'll also kind of recognize the layout of this place as being very similar to the Hirata estate in Sekiro. Because it's the same, like, it's obviously, it's, it's the same style of building. With this, like, manor kind of thing. Uh, let's go through here first. My only real memory of In Excess is when Michael Hutchins died. It was a big story, but, um, prior to that, I, I didn't really know anything about them. They were like an 80s thing. Oh yeah, yeah, again, like, we have another, um, god. Oh no, the VOD keeps the, the, um, the chat, like, on the side, so... Here we go. Yeah, this... this is like... Okay, great, but I don't know... Um... <laughs> what? Like, like it's okay, snake, goat, rookie, rooster, dog, pig, etc. But... 
when you see the puzzle, those are all written in kanji, and I have no idea what's what, so... Not a terribly useful hint if you're playing this in English. So, okay. So our goal is to get to North Pavilion, because that's where the bell that gets Ayako to come out of her room is. Okay, cool. See you near, Lucky. Okay, see you, Vodka. How long is this game? It is broken into three chapters. Right now we're just doing this chapter, which... I played it last night, like, blind, and it was, uh, like, four hours. So now that I know what I'm doing, it's probably closer to three. And then when this chapter is done, we will call it a night, and I will do the second chapter, which is, I think, a similar length later on. Um, like, the, the long play for this game is about six hours. So I'm guessing it's, like, three hours per chapter, and, um... Oh, vodka left! Okay. Well, uh... I'm glad you're still with us. Because I'm not using Elgato, the, um... I can actually read the chat, because there's not a gigantic interface clogging up the screen. Oh, hey! Jeremy's here. Hello, Jeremy. So that's another one of the weird, like, wicker baskets that you'll see. They, they mark them on the map. They don't really do anything in terms of gameplay. It's just to remind you where they are. There's a lot of these creepy baskets lying around. And if you saw the intro, you'll remember you got to see, like, someone being pulled into one and then sort of disappearing. Okay, boss time. I'm going to equip a summon card for this boss. Um, I'm using the word boss pretty generously. It is not a difficult fight. But, um... I did die the first time this happens because I was bad at judging how much health I had. So... Thank you for the tutorial in the middle of the boss fight. So I've used a summon card to call on this, like, dog thing to fight for me. You only get two of these uh, in this chapter that I'm aware of, so I won't use both of them. Also call on some spiders, because why not? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's um, this is in, in re- response to Beautiful Baron of Tutu. This game has fully 3D environments, but it uses Resident Evil style fixed camera angles. So like. We're stuck from this angle, but you can see, like, the environment does move around in 3D. Uh, anyway, let's grab the bell we came for. I just want to save. Yeah, I don't entirely know why they use them either, and it's not great to, um, to fight with. Now we have the bell, we can go wake up, uh, Ayako. Oh yeah, hang on, I'll show you. These walls that have, like, sutras written on them. Hey, Doom Kitty. You'll remember that the very first, like, Sekiro teaser, it had the, the like, what we now know as the Shinobi prosthetic, like, dug into a wall that had this on it. And that's what made everyone think, like, oh yeah. This uh, Shadows Die Twice thing, totally cool on too. The thrilling combat of Kuon. I said like earlier on you get you get different weapons, but they're all the same moveset. You basically just get two slight upgrades to the knife thing we have now. Are they ghosts or the undead? They are both. Um there are like act there are like spirits that phase in and out, and there's also there's the Gaki, who are the, um, the hungry ghosts. And, like, it explains later on, like, where they, where they came from. It's to do with the silkworm stuff. Yeah, if you want to know what Gaki are, they're the blood lickers from Bloodborne. They're a Japanese, like, undead thing. The idea being that, like, if you're a... Like, a, a bad person, you'll be reincarnated as... A Gaki or a hungry ghost. And the idea is that, like, you... You're, do you're doomed to always be hungry and nothing can satisfy you. So you end up, like, eating blood and feces and stuff. To stay, like... Because you're just... You're so hungry, you're eating everything, and you're eating all of this, like, diseased filth. And that's why in Bloodborne there's the, um... The blood lickers. Because they're clearly, like... They look like Thumerians that transform. The idea is, like, they're, they're like, cursed or something, and they've they've reached a point where they, like... They're so hungry for blood that they're just licking up any blood they can find. Thank you, Giovanni, for the $2. And yes, confirmed Bloodborne sequel. I sense an evil. A presence wanting to devour souls. I... I have no idea. But... For some time now, I've... I've been hearing song at nightfall. And disease has spread through this place. The hungry. They roam the manor at night. Then... Oh, when I hear that song, I fear I'll be killed. Or worse, abducted. We found you.
So, like, when she was saying the hungry, that's why she's... We were talking about Gaki before and the idea of, like, the hungry. The Gaki or the hungry. Okay, good. We got three spikes and three discs were in business. And yeah, like, I, I meshed through this Silkworm Diary, because I, I don't want this to go on for an eternity, but basically, there was a servant boy who was given some Silkworm eggs by the those two creepy twins. And he was given instructions about how to care for them, and, like, the diary is him kind of raising the Silkworms. And you'll notice that, like... There's a lot of talk of, um... Like, that thing we killed that came out of the cupboard, it kind of looked like a grub. And then... Like, those wicker chests. Like, people are disappearing inside a chest, kind of like a cocoon. So there's something going on with silkworms and grubs and cocoons in this, but... We don't know exactly what yet. Yeah, we just saw, uh, Kureha. Walk off in this direction. So... Now I get to try and remember where the, um... Yeah, it's by the spring, isn't it? Although I think, from memory, like... Something moves here now that we've seen Kureha, although I may be wrong. Like, it moves the broken stuff. Yeah, they've been pushed aside. There we go. By someone far stronger than Utsuki. Oh, here's a ghost. Can't quite see it, because it's, like, caught over there. Hang on. Gotta heal ourselves. Oh, okay, not actually damaged. Uh, where are you? Oh, it's gone. Okay, never mind. Oh. I don't remember this happening last time. Yeah. Combat. Talk about Project Beast in the chat. I will be doing a Project Beast comparison uh, at some point. I was planning to do it, like, now, but we ended up doing Kuon instead, so... I guess, like, sometime uh, next week, we'll have a shot at putting together what we know about Project Beast. And comparing it to Bloodborne. 
Because we actually know a fair bit about Project Beast. That, like... Yeah, um, most people, like... There's a lot of stuff in Project Beast that's not really being shown off. Because it's not, um... It's basically not very interesting. <laughs> um, in video form, like... Like, if any... Like, people will obviously know Lance. Um, Lance finds a lot of stuff, but what he makes videos out of is basically the stuff that you can show off. So when we find, like, a random bit of text or... Ooh, hang on. Something about the capture device screwing up. Um, it seems fine to me. Um, this is running off an emulator that's not great. Hang on, let's get rid of this guy first. It's amazing combat. Oh, just... Ugh. Anyway, um, there's a lot of, like, stuff that you can't show it off. It's not like a, an enemy that can be restored or an area we can see images of. It's just, like, random bits and pieces of data. And I figure, like, you know, I'm not Lance. <laughs> People know what they're getting into with me, so... I may as well show off some of that, because I can. Ha! Like, um, to give you an example, there is a Project Beast loading screen that we have. It was like the equivalent of, um, the... I actually don't- this didn't happen when I played it last time, must, this must be optional, because I skipped this completely. This whole, like, fishing hut thing. Um, so, like, we have the Project Beast loading screen. Like, the equivalent of before they patched it, when you loaded in Bloodborne, it just was the word Bloodborne across the screen. But the, um, Project Beast loading screen, it has an image on it of, like, an- like, it's like a beast in armor. It's like, um, if you, you know those, like, the, the big, um, fat armored guys with the axes? If you imagine one of them turned into a beast, it's kind of like that. It's like this beast that's sort of bulging out of its armor. It's like, sort of, like, the armor is strained and cracked because the person underneath is turned. And it's this, like, horrible, like, pig thing. And it looks like the, um... You know in Old Yarnum, there's those two statues near the altar that... If you look at them, they don't really look like anything in the game. They're just like a weird sort of distorted face with, with horns. Um, it looks like that. It looks like it's like they were originally conceived of as a reference to this, this unused, like, beast thing. Kind of like Vought. Um, if you- Vought, it's like- it's bipedal, but yeah, it is kind of like Vought. Um, the double barrel shotgun- the double barrel shotgun, like, the, um... In the- the Project Beast footage they showed off, none of that is actually, like, an item. Um, that model of the hunter with the double barreled shotgun. That is- that is entirely, like, a self-contained thing. Um, that's not, like- Equipment. That is just one model of a guy with a double barrel shotgun. It can't be unequipped. Uh, it's just part of the model. Can I run past this? Ugh. Um, talking about, like, the beast thing, like... I brought this up on a podcast with Sin, but, like... It looks like early on you were going to be able to turn into a beast. But it wasn't like like it is in the DLC. You didn't, like, get beast mode. You got, like, a, um... It would have been, like, a non-standard game over. Kind of like in, in Dark Souls when you get cursed. And you turn into a statue and then you just, like, you just respawn at the bonfire. It looks like it would have been that. 
Oh no, the NPC with the shotgun, that's that's like it was just a placeholder. It wasn't a um ever intended to actually be in the game. It's just like this is what we have in mind, basically. Yeah, the frame rate is um Mm. You can also see, like, in, uh... Yeah, yeah, Akron is bringing up in, like, Vampire the Masquerade, like... You can, if you fully become a vampire in that, you're no longer playable. Kind of like that, yeah. Because, um... You know how, like, when, if you get poisoned or frenzied in Bloodborne... There's the, um you get the, this, like, prompt on screen that says Poison or Frenzy. In There's an unused one of those that says Transformed. And, like, early on, there's uh, references to, like, there's an item that lowers Beasthood. Because right now you can only ever increase Beasthood because it's, like, it's a buff. You, there's no reason to undo it. But in... The early version, there is something that reduces your beasthood. So it looks a lot like the plan was that, like, beasthood would still be a buff, but if it ever maxed out, you got a non-standard death. Oh, hey, Kaysidiv. Kaysidiv knows a lot about Kuon, so I guess she can answer questions better than me, because I am... I played this once last night, just to do the yin phase. Yeah, there is a place... There are a bunch of placeholder names in, uh, Darks... In, in Bloodborne that straight up call it, like, Demon Souls 2. Hi, Mr. Cuddles. So, I don't remember this. I think it's this order. I did this last night, but I was just trying, like, every conceivable combination, and then it eventually worked. Hey, got it. Good. Yeah, Kaysidiv has a playthrough of this on her channel that's much better than this one. Uh, Kaysidiv has not been on Sin and I's channel, but she and I did some Dark Souls 3 stuff. Uh, like, shortly after that game came out, and also she's been on Aegon's channel a few times, and I was with her on one of them. Um, Bloodborne and Demon Souls in the same universe, it looks like they were going to be in the same universe initially. And then as it progressed, it became its own thing. Um, but yeah, Gascoigne saying Umbasa is like... That... That was like... Hmm. Like, uh, yeah, they were the same world, basically. Um, exact origin of Amygdala is the final boss. Yeah, Amygdala is, like, was going to be the final boss at one point. Um, Amygdala actually has an animation most people don't see. Yeah, Amygdala internally is called False God. And then the Amygdala that cling to the buildings are called Angels of the False God. And that's why, like, the healing church is all, like, amygdala statues everywhere. Because it was going to be, that was the reveal, that they were worshipping this amygdala thing. And then, um... Amygdala actually has an animation that, like... You don't see it. Really. It does it, but it it's only in the chalice dungeons. And it, it immediately moves out of it when you enter the room. So you can see it for, like, a frame. 
but it has an animation where it's holding something in its hand and looking at it. And I think that might have been it holding, like, the baby. Because it's similar to, like, when you encounter, um, uh, Osiris in, in 3 and he's, like, clasping, like, nothing to his chest and saying, oh, Ocelot, Ocelot. Amygdala has a very similar animation. And I'm pretty sure that was meant to be it holding, like, the baby they were using to summon it. Because the idea of the babies being used to summon them is, like, one of the first things. Uh, this is filling in the backstory of, like, the this demon that the, we were using the spikes on. Um, I don't want to read everything because I don't want this to drag on for an eternity, but... Casative's playthrough. You can watch that. She will go into detail about it. Um, if you weren't here early on, I also plugged a video by a channel called Exorcizzle. And that's got a ton of spoilers in it, but she goes through, like, and explains how the whole unreliable narrator thing works. Yeah, I've been able to get further than Sin because I don't have a crippling fear of trees. Um, the healing church worship. The idea- okay, I can feel- I can explain this. The idea behind the healing church is it's- They've got the idea of communion. Hang on, let's wait for this guy to finish talking. other creatures soon, they will die. Corpses are needed for their cocoons. Okay. Uh, we need this thing on the ground. Right. So... What Miyazaki... The reason that the Healing Church are, like, really Catholic is that what he takes from Catholicism is the idea of communion. It's the idea that you use holy blood, and then when you use that blood, you commune with a higher power. So he's taken that, the idea of, like, blood connecting you to something divine, and he's built the healing church from that. So they don't worship a specific deity. They're just like a weird sort of cult of scientist mystics who are trying to use the blood to commune with the Great Ones. But they don't, there's not a specific god that they worship. That's why people call them the blood worshipping church. Because what they're really interested in is the blood and its properties. It's not a specific Great One. And, like, the idea of a, a healing church, like, as a concept, seems to have come from the way that, like, makeshift hospitals would be set up in churches. Like, if a hos- if there were no- they would make, a, like, a field hospital and they would- they would set them up in churches. And, um, like, there's one of those in Brotherhood of the Wolf. Which we know is, like, a really obvious influence on Bloodborne. So I'm pretty sure he was just watching Brotherhood of the Wolf, saw that there was a hospital in a church, and then that was, like, what set him off down the, um, the path of creating the healing church. Because there's a scene in Brotherhood of the Wolf that straight up just looks like the research hall, where there's, like, the beds laid out in the church.
And again, but even like Kuon, like, if you were paying attention to that guy, the whole point of Kuon is it's like these monks are trying to use this weird, like, eldritch monstrosity corrupted silkworm shit to heal people. He was saying, like, you know, if they don't keep merging, they'll die. They're, like, trying to use this to, to heal the sick. Yeah, Brotherhood of the Wolf is good. Watch a Brotherhood of the Wolf uh, and Bram Stoker's Dracula and then play Resident Evil 4. And then read Uzumaki and you will realize Miyazaki has... Uh... Hmm. He is, um... I don't know how to phrase this, but he, uh... He uses a lot of other people's ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Brotherhood of the Wolf, like, straight up Henrik's set is in that. There's also, like, people don't believe me when I say this because it's so blatant, but... The, the, um, the transforming beast cutter weapon, the, like, giant kind of blade that segments and turns into a whip, that is in Brotherhood of the Wolf. That exact weapon is just in that. Yeah, Miyazaki, he, he draws a lot, like, on other things that he's... Like, the Mikolash, that guy, like, case of saying, um... Uzumaki is Bloodborne. Mikolash is just in Uzumaki. Like, that character. Is just in there. There's a guy who looks exactly like Mikolash. Um, who, like, contacts something in space and he is, like... There's all these scenes of him going crazy and talking about the cosmos. I showed Sin some footage from Resident Evil 4 the other day because she's never played it. And if, you, if you're not familiar with it, the entire Forbidden Woods area is, is taken from Resident Evil 4. And I showed it to her and there was a pause and she just went... Do people know about this? But yeah, there's nothing wrong with, like... I'm not criticizing him, I'm just saying, like... You have to understand an awful lot of the things in these games are just taken, like... Exactly from, like, just things Miyazaki likes. Um, I have not read Blade of the Immortal, so I don't know. But I will... I'm gonna have to look into it. And yeah, Acheron just saying, like, yeah, it's, it's not about the things you take, it's about what you do with them. But it's just like it's it's kind of amusing in Bloodborne's case because it's so blatant.
Uh, Potato saying that they want to see like a Hollywood actor in a From game. The um, the woman who's the voice of the Emerald Herald is an Oscar nominee. A lot of the cast of the From games, they were in a lot of anime dubs in the 90s. So it's the same, like... Like, Frog Nation seemed to be connected to a lot of, like, older OVA actors. This is where the fixed camera angles become an issue, because I cannot remember if this goes anywhere. So I can't kill it now. Okay. Um, you'll notice that, like, I have a quote-unquote new weapon, which is the same weapon, but it has, like, a cold thing. Later on, I'll get a fire thing that lets me kill off... Uh, like, I can kill enemies that are sort of in, like, that dormant state. By stabbing it into them, it, like, burns them. I think I... Need to go back now. <laughs> this area is massively confusing. Uh, this is like huge. Patches VA is is a wrestling uh, wrestling guy. He goes by he's Will Vanders, and if you look him up, he like does a whole lot of like MMA commentary. No, um, uh, Patches VA, he's an actor, but he's also, like, an MMA fighter. And, like, he's done MMA, um, like, wrestling commentary, if you, if you look him up. And that, the voice he does as Patches is just his normal voice. So you have to imagine, like, Patches' voice, but coming out of this, like, massive black guy. It, it's kind of, like, uh, really odd if you're used to patches. The case that they're talking about, um, uh, Abe no Seime, that is a, a character who shows up in this, and they, they're like a historical character? I don't know, but they're a, a man, they're a man, but in Kuon, they reimagine the character as a woman, and there's like an interview with the director where they explain, like, why they did it. There's a there's a Kuon wiki that's like reasonably detailed that has all this like press stuff on it. Cause like this this game Like did not um did not do well critically or commercially, at least in the West, when it came out. 
but it has a like it, it got a cult following. Okay, we're kind of like making pretty good time. Uh, we're like less than two hours, and we're approaching the end. And yeah, one of the reasons that it got criticized was people said that the story didn't make sense. Which is why I wanted to link to that Exorcism video. Because she's... she sort of maps it out and she's like, no, it, it does make sense, you just have to, like... It very explicitly has unreliable narrators in it. Are there any podcasts on Armored Core? Um, we want to do one because one of my friends is really into Armored Core and I want to talk about it with him, but we haven't found a good time yet. He knows much more about it than I do. He was actually in chat when I was streaming it and he's like, no, that's a, that's a next, not a Lynx. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, people talking about how, like, Bloodborne inverts Lovecraft. Like, yeah, it does. And, um... That's common in, like, a, like people who write in that tradition. Like, Grant Morrison and China Mieville, like, they all set out to invert Lovecraft. But to keep the, uh... The affect and keep, like... The things he's dealing with. Is Metal Wolf Chaos like Armored Core? Uh, not really. Metal Wolf Chaos is very, like, arcade -y and very fast, but there's not the same, um... Like, Armored Core is, is, like, very, like, rivet counter. It's, like, obsessive building and stuff. Whereas Metal Wolf Chaos, you just sort of have, like, one mech throughout the whole thing. You can upgrade it, but you don't build it from scratch like you do in Armored Core. Good news, we found our dad. Father. What are you doing? I am caring after the people in the cocoon. Unless they merge with another creature, they can't survive. Unless these people merge with another creature, they cannot survive. Yes, my sister, too. Entering a cocoon nine times will cure them. To help her better assimilate your flesh and blood. Never. You are the reason she is dead. Now it's your turn. too early. Merging will be a failure to prevent that from happening. Get into the wicker chest. Yes, father. Uh. 
So this kind of explains where the Garki come from. Because, like, if you're in a cocoon and it ruptures before you finish the ritual of the cocoon, you become a Garki. So that's where they've come from, basically. They're like failed experiments. We've got a ton of these summon cards now. Uh, when I played this the first time, I was... Hey, Sam. Uh, when I played this the first time, I, like, stockpiled summon cards because I assumed there was going to be, like, a massive boss fight, but in the Yin chapter, there isn't. Okay, we got ourselves a map now. Yep, we have a laboratory, a dream chamber, a nursery, and a library. So, like... We're getting, like, into sort of bloodborne -y territory. I'm gonna save because there's a ton of stupid, <laughs> stupid things around here. This is the second place I died when I played it. I got. Oh. So you start hearing like auditory hallucinations of Korea and Utsuki's past here, but um, they're not subtitled. <laughs> But yeah, it'll, it kind of makes sense without them, it just sort of, like, helps explain what's happening. So we got this odd hallucination of uh, our sister, like, falling, and then if you look through, it's not there anymore. So we're gonna, like, throughout this we've seen weird hallucinations of Koreha. And exactly why that is... It turns out, like, later on, yeah. There's a reason we keep seeing her. And it's not just like, ooh, ghosts. It's like, there's something more going on between the two of us. And the way we're connected. for my sister. So yeah, a uh, ton of creepy, creepy wicker chests here. We get told they have silk in them, so it's like... Here we go. That's what's been going on with all those creepy silkworms and cocoons. Here we go. So you remember that thing that popped out of the cupboard earlier? That it was like a... ...human grub thing? You find the same thing here, so it's like someone who was in the middle of, of this pupa thing. 
this pupa transformation. The people inside the cocoons, what are they thinking about? Two merge into one. Two will merge into one. So I don't want to, like, spoil a ton of stuff, but that was very important when they were talking about, like, what other people in the chest thinking about. They're dreaming a dream, and then when Utsuki looks in the Blood River, the reflection is Kureha. So this is where the whole, like, unreliable narrator thing comes into it. Because it's kind of doing, ooh, what if it was a dream? But it's, that's built into the story. Like, the fact that there's dreams in this is significant. I'm talking about merging into one being, like, they, they will just straight up, like, in the yin chapter explain what's going on. Hi, Sin! Okay, Gaki time. Well, okay, Sin, you can tell us, is this more or less interesting than watching paint dry? Just keep in mind, the people who made this combat also made Sekiro. Yeah, you look like you've got something. Can I... Thank you. Yeah, we learn about merging in this chapter, and then in the Yang chapter we will actually see it. And it is pretty gross. Okay, ability unlocked. Utsuki can now climb very, very shallow slopes. Um, Potato, it is much more like the thing uh, than it is Bloodborne. 
Because when they talk about things merging, like, it is, uh, like, a spiritual merging, but in some of the stuff we'll see, it's also physical. And you will see people merging with the things that they took into the cocoon with them. And not all the things they took into the cocoons are human. Yeah, this weapon is, um, the description says it's, like, blessed by the god of cold in the north. And it has this, like, I guess that's meant to be ice, but shortly we're going to get the fire version, which is much better. Uh, Rosmarinus is the name for Rosemary. And it's called that because, like, it's meant to be like a herbal sort of incense that it's spraying. Okay, see ya, Sen. We should be done soon. We're almost at the end.
of talk about Japanese horror movies in chat. There's a truly horrifying Japanese movie called MD Geist that Sin and I will be watching soon. So from memory, this is another, like, you just have to trigger a character to do something. Then run back again, and then they'll be somewhere else. So I think that Onmyoji guy should be out here now. Unless I've screwed it up. Oh, he's not here. Okay, good. What cloths do I have? And Neptune. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm supposed to go here initially. Yeah, they kind of give you the cloths out of numeric sequence, so I assumed I couldn't go through here because it was eight, but... I actually, I have eight, but not seven or six. MD Geist is an extremely infamous anime. I'm alone. Are you waiting to be fed too? Sometimes the frame rate takes a dive and it's kind of like I'm walking on the moon. Uh... Okay. Is there a huge silkworm? No, there's like a bunch of little silkworms producing it. I know eventually I have to go through that hole, but I think I have to trigger a guy to show up. I know you can get to the other side of this river. Do I go over here? Oh, I see, yep. There's a passage outside down here.
Oh yeah, the, the on Myoji guy should be passed here. Oh, okay, it looks like it's happening in a different order. Okay, check it out. We have a fire sword now. Oh no, he's there. I can see him. Read the walls. It appears to be a poem. The dampness has made it unreadable. Yeah, I was reading the walls last night, but they all seem to say they were unreadable. I don't know if they, they all have a different description. Yeah. Again, like, I was saying this before, but this is why... Some people thought, oh, here we go, this is different. The Song of Geisha. Okay, so the, one of them you can read. And this, uh, this thing just fills out the uh, backstory of the Mulberry Twins. Those two creepy little... Uh, twins we keep seeing, they're like the manifestations of the mulberry trees that are producing the silkworms that are the cause of all of this. And... I don't have seven, so I can't... So if I'm... If I've done this right, that guy should show up on the other... Like, if we sort of chase him, he'll move the lumber that was blocking us before. I guess it's like, it's an odd um, structure, because a lot of other survival horror games, like, the protagonist would have to do all this stuff. Like, the protagonist would need to be the one that moved the lumber or whatever. But in, in Kuon, an awful lot of it is... You kind of have to trigger an NPC to do something for you. Like, you got to find them and then they'll run off and they'll solve the, the puzzle for you. What is the plot of this game? <laughs> um, well... We... We are a Shrine Maiden. And we've been sent to... Like, our father has told us to, like, there's something going on at the shrine. We gotta go there and we gotta figure out what it is. And when we arrive, uh, all kinds of horrible things are going on involving silkworms. Okay, this... This is the single most pathetic Utsuki moment in the game. Um, she cannot step over this thing. It's apparently blocking the way. There is there is no way to step over this at all. It's like something Mike Dawson would do. Okay, here we go. That on Myoji should be out here now. Here he is. I'm gonna save now because this guy got me once. This is effectively the final boss of Yin. The chapter's not going to be over for a bit longer, but... Um, this, like... This is our last, like, major fight, basically.
incredible boss fight. Like, I don't, I don't hate that the fights in this are not great, but they also go on for a little too long. Like, I don't, I don't know what th we're really gaining from this guy not having half as much health as he does, because this is like... Like, I got it. I think we've, we've established that we can beat this guy. We don't really need... Oh my god. Uh, just die. Now, we can't run back the way we came to use the Uranus Cloth, so... Because remember, there is that... There is a Gaki in the way. I mean, I, every morning I step over a pile of clothes that is more impressive than that thing. But, nonetheless... Also here, they give us uh, some new summons that... There's no real reason to use them. Because, like, from now on it's just going to be more Garky and Grub people. This diary fills out... That's oh, what's she going to tell us now, anyway? I had absolutely no choice. Okay, see ya, Acherontis. How the Vod will stay up, so... We'll be able to watch it later on. But yeah, basically when Utsuki and Korea were girls. Um Utsuki well, I mean you'll see it reenacted, but basically Utsuki inadvertently caused Korea to die. And she was brought back by the Mulberry twins. And that's kind of like how they're all connected. You'll, there's like a cutscene that shows it later on. Ooh, at last. 
She's awake. Go to the mulberry tree. So one of the twins has died. And we'll find out why that is later on. Because, yeah, it's, um, the impression you get initially is that Yin happens first, followed by Yang. But it's more complicated than that, and they're actually kind of, like, crossing over with each other. And you also have, uh, like, unreliable narrators, obviously. So events we've seen in the Yin chapter may not have been how it really played out, but we will find out later on. The Creepy Twins are the manifestations of the two mulberry trees. There was a note that said that as we were going through it. Utsuki killed me. Yes, you pushed me and killed me right here. Oh, sacred trees are just like a thing in Japan. That's basically where it's coming from. Okay, so we are almost at the end of the game. At the end of Yin, rather. So like that that's an error with the emulator. Um basically like we'll be able to knock that wall down later on and that's why it's it's showing that weird like shadow effect. Okay, okay good. Iron wedge. Oh, okay, if you, I guess if you, like, open the, no? 
It's something, some, there's something glitched about the lighting, anyway. Let's uh, go through here. Wait, what? I think I can use that item. The wall looks weak, okay. Cool. Maybe there's no point in going there. Here we go. I got lost here when I did it yesterday. The thing's going to crawl in front of the screen as we go over here. There we go. I thought that was cool when I saw it last night. So this was the third place I died when I played it, because, you know, these things are annoying. Let's go... Let's summon a living ball of flame. This is like an AoE thing. Yeah, this is, um... For God's sake. Yeah, they are very much like the mangroves. I'm um, also the idea of like people going into a cocoon and kind of pupating is also with the pilgrims, and the way that they kind of become the butterflies later on. And it's like, I don't know, were they going for something like that? In 3, and then in the 28th revision they removed it? Who knows? Yeah, Lance has finally played the Ring City. So, he'll have something to say about it. Because a lot of, um... If you've been following Lance's work, he's been talking a lot about an area called God's Grave. And, like, I've seen bits and pieces of God's Grave. Because he hadn't played the Ring City before. Because he was showing it to me and he's like, does this look familiar? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, they, um... The stuff you're showing me is in the DLC. And he's like, oh! So you will be able to see, like... The pilgrims kind of become pupa in um, the Dreg Heap, because you see them, like... 
there's like pilgrims that have like cracked open and there's like a like a grub pilgrim poking out the top and that's what's summoning the angel Have I gone the wrong way? No. Wait, yes? No, wait, this is the right way, good, okay. Hi, Herald of Oblivion. See, if you want a preview of, like, Lance's stuff, um, those big, like, the tombstones that you hide from the archers behind with the holes in the middle, they're in the base game. Like, that area is also partially in the base game. And it, it was, like, gonna be under Lothric, or something like that. It's, it's very strange. Um, the thing about the the grubs in the Ringed City is that, like, there's the ones that you kill that summon the hostile angels, but then the old, the stone hump hag at the start, like, it looks like she actually, like, grows into one, and that flies off, because she doesn't ever produce a pupa. But she does produce an angel. Well, I think the idea behind the the hag is that, like, she pupated and flew off, like, while we weren't there. Or something like that. I don't, I don't really know. Like, one thing that's going to come out when you, like, Lance is done is that a lot of the ringed city looks like it was supposed to be, like, in the base game. But with a different role. Essentially. So, like, all those, um... All those, like... Like, the way the Ring City is, like, there's a, like, a curved path, but then there's also an underground, uh, like, cemetery grave thing, but then there's also, like, a swamp, and it, it the reason that's all there is because those are recycled. But initially they were something different, so it's kind of like, I don't know. Uh, this way. Do we know what the assets are going to look like? Yeah, we've seen them. Um, those, like... The, um... The, the little graves with the holes in the middle. Like, they're just in Dark Souls 3. They're just never used. 
But, like, initially, they were something else. And it, it kind of looks like the idea of um, a place where the Dark Soul was held, like, sealed away. That may have been the, um, the initial idea behind Lothric. That the reason, like, the Twin Princes turn to the Dark and everything, and there's the... The people bursting into pus of man enemies is that the dark soul itself was underneath Lothric. Like that that huge like mountain that it's on, you would have gone underneath there, and the dark soul was like buried there, like it's buried in the Ring City. Something like that. We don't really know. And the blood of the Dark Soul that you get from Gale, like, that looks like it was in there as well. And you, you know, um, when you, when you beat the Dancer of the Valley, and she, um, there, there's that weird cutscene where you just, like, you get the basin from Emma, you put the basin on the statue, and then the statue just fills it with blood, and a ladder comes down. And it's never really like, what just happened? Why did I need an item to do this? And it it looks like that's because that functioned differently and you needed the blood that comes out of the statue. It was a separate item. You would have gotten that blood and brought it back to Lothric to, like, activate that statue thing, essentially. Uh, I guess similar to, like, satiating the Lord Vessel. lost again, but this is not a very big area, so let's just double back. Yeah, from Iterate a lot. Oh, here we go. Jupiter, yay. Considerably. Father! You said that entering the chest nine times will cure the disease. My stupid daughter. You shouldn't believe everything you hear. Don't resist your cravings, child. <laughs> Merge with another. <laughs> you in the cocoon. It was the twins. Sad. <laughs> you didn't believe your own sister. You are worthless. Are Lothric Knights humans or gods? Um, the Lothric Knights are humans, but, like, it's... Again, like, because that game so much is, like, obscured, but... The Lothric royal family are descended from, like, Gwyn's... Gwyn's family. So, like, they're, like... 
the way that God works in Dark Souls is it's more like the gods are a bloodline or like a clan. So yeah, the people in Lothric are the descendants of like Guinevere and um They're the descendants actually of, of the nameless king initially. It's like it's like a divine bloodline going back to the nameless king. Um, well, the Silver Knights, like, like, Loki, who we've talked to, he, he came up with this term. It's not in the game, but it's, it's useful. Where he says, like, menial. I don't know why he picked that word, but, um, it's like, the, the Silver Knights are like, they're somewhere, they're not the gods, but they're also not human. They're like a divine sort of being, but they're not, they're not part of the gods. So, like, the giants and the knights and everything, they predate humans, they were... They're not human. You know, Artorius isn't human. The giants are, like, a different species, they're not just big people, etc. Anyway, we are approaching the end. Uh, I'm actually not controlling the game right now, it's, this is all scripted. Yeah, Deracine is, I think, like, yeah. Why are Lothic Knights so huge? Um, I'm pretty sure that is just a gameplay thing. Because it helps. I must it's like, why is Gascoigne so big? Why are the old hunters all a head taller than you? It's just so it's easier to see them, basically. I pretty much think it's just that. And that is the end of Yin. Well, Ga Gascoigne's big because of his beasthood, but, like, generally in the Souls games, the enemies are designed to be slightly taller than you. Because you're seeing it from a third-person perspective. So if they were the same height or shorter than you, your character would obscure them. Like, I'm pretty sure it's just that. So that was the in phase, and we did it in under three hours. So yeah, that's uh, faster than I thought it was going to be. So hang on, I'll just I'll just reset. We can leave the intro running. So yeah, that was the yin phase. We're going to do the yang phase probably this time next week. Yeah, yeah, Sekiro is a good example. Like, Owl is is gigantic. To make it, like, easier to fight Owl, basically. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just that. Like, I, I don't think there's a like a, an in-game, like, story reason. I guess we'll watch the intro again, because now you kind of have context for a lot of this. That's the guy with the bell that we killed earlier, Fujiwara. He was like a like weird spider thing crawling around.
and this is like when we rescued um Ayako, she's saying like I'm I'm frightened of being killed, but I'm more frightened of being abducted. And this is what she's referring to, that like people disappear. And then they like they're being fed into into those wicker cabinets where they're like undergoing the silkworm ritual. So yeah, that, I guess the intro makes a little more sense now. So, uh, thanks for showing up everyone. We had around, like, 35-ish viewers for most of this, so thank you. I know this was an awkward time for a lot of people. Um, the, the lady in the box is, is Kureha. So, you, like, one of the things that, um... I don't know if you could see it because of, like, the resolution and everything, but when we killed Fujiwara when he was, like, a weird spider thing, his neck kind of split open and you could see a, like, a face poke out. And that's because Kureha and Fujiwara were both in that thing and they kind of merged together. Um, that's possibly not true. Hang on, I'll put, um, the, uh, exorcism thing back up. Hang on. Oh, I closed it. Okay. Um, for the people who weren't here earlier... If you are interested in the story... Because, I mean, we only really saw half of it, and this game does have an intentionally, like, unreliable narrator. There is a video up, I'm not going to put the gigantic YouTube URL, so just, like, type the entirety of Kuon, explained. You will find that, that is by a channel called Exorcizzle, um, I have, like, contacted her, she is on Twitter as well. And, um, yeah, she's going to come on at some point and talk about survival horror games with us. But she has a channel that's all survival horror game related stuff, and she's put this video together. It's very comprehensive, like lining up basically what happens in Kuon and explaining how the unreliable narrator thing works. Because it, it does, like, it's, it's a dreamlike story, but there is a coherent narrative to it. It's not just like random stuff happening. So if you are interested in Kuon, you can view that. That obviously it spoils the whole game. So if you wanna if you wanna be in for a surprise next time we do this, don't watch it. But um Yeah, uh next week at around this time we will reveal what was going on. So I will see you all then, and in between I will try to do the Project Beast comparison stream. So I'll see you all uh around, I guess. Bye bye.